Improving traffic safety and operations is our main goal. However, traffic collisions still occur. Leaders from academia, industry, and government are working together to accelerate the deployment of Advanced ITS, or Intelligent Transportation System, a type of communication technology to tackle this global challenge. We will explain V2X, or Vehicle to Everything, as a typical ITS for safety. The US, Europe, and Japan all have slogans for reducing traffic accidents, with the goal of no deaths or serious injuries. According to the US Department of Transportation, the main requirements for V2X are that exchanges are non-networked, protocols are interoperable, coexistence in the same channel, and must be backward compatible. Devices are omnidirectional with 360 degrees of coverage. Communications operate predominantly within a 300 meter range. Signals are largely unaffected by environmental conditions. Also, V2X is uniquely crafted for certain crash scenarios. It can also be used in other vehicles. Communications have been designed for significant security and privacy protection with low latency, free from harmful interference, coverage with scalability, high reliability, and stability. In the United States, the Federal Communications Commission proposed 5.850 to 5.925 GHz for ITS in 1999 and announced it in 2003, making a buffer of 5 MHz against unlicensed Wi-Fi under 5.850 GHz. V2X requires 75 MHz for U.S. road safety. This allocation includes critical V2X services, such as basic safety messages, vehicle to infrastructure messages, collective perception messages, maneuver coordination messages, messages for platooning and CACC, and messages for vulnerable road users, to name a few. This requirement was calculated by multiple independent sources, including SAE and C2CCC. However, the FCC recently proposed reallocating to 45 MHz from the 75 MHz band previously allocated to V2X communications. This would be insufficient for these required services to function. The use of collective perception messages allows vehicles to see what they otherwise could not, further distances and around obstructions, such as curves and buildings. Connected infrastructure or a connected vehicle can spot non-connected vehicles and non-connected vulnerable road users, such as pedestrians, bicycles, scooters, motorcycles, and road workers. That information is transmitted to other vehicles whose drivers do not have a line of sight to the non-connected objects, allowing the vehicles to react ahead of time, faster than they could otherwise. This advanced warning can reduce accident frequency and potentially save lives, even when not all of the vehicles involved are connected. Maneuver coordination messages allow vehicles to know what other vehicles intend to do ahead of time. With the existing 75 MHz allocation, services using CPM and MCM may be available in the near future, with completion expected by 2022 or 2023, and U.S. deployment is expected by 2024 or 2025. However, if the NPRM or Notice of Proposed Rulemaking Channel Plan is implemented, this service will be lost. These channel allocations have been used to support a basic set of V2X messages that lay the groundwork for a wide range of applications that are beneficial to the public. 
they require the entirety of the existing 75 megahertz for real-world use. These are analyses of public comments and replies regarding the FCC's NPRM. As summarized, approximately 90% of academia, the public sector, and the private sector disagree with NPRM and support V2X as it is. In fact, over half are in favor of DSRC. These are several comments, and more than 85% opposed the FCC's proposal in favor of preserving the entire band for V2X technologies. The FCC could partner with USDOT safety experts to work with stakeholders in the telecommunications and automotive industries, as well as states and local authorities. In assent from AFAI, or the Alliance for Automotive Innovation, Within five years, a total of at least five million radios on vehicles and roadway infrastructures will be deployed, including previous V2X deployments. Given the absence of studies, data, and analyses which support the FCC's position, the FCC should withdraw the NPRM. Recommendations on V2X technology of choice for the ITS band must be the subject of a mature set of standards, must be proven through real-world testing to work effectively in ITS environments, must be future-proof by having a well-defined evolutionary path. LTE V2X is not ready for deployment. Led by ITS America and AFAI, 41 stakeholders asked the U.S. Senate Subcommittee on Communications, Technology and Innovation and the Internet Committee on Commerce, Science and Transportation to reconsider the NPRM. And on September 10, 2020, a petition was submitted by 50 relevant organizations led by ITSA and AFAI to the White House Chief of Staff. A coalition of transportation industry stakeholders comprised of state, city, and county departments of transportation, public transportation, automakers, law enforcement, infrastructure equipment suppliers, bicyclists, and pedestrians, and others that care deeply about transportation safety, expressed significant concern over the FCC's efforts to reallocate spectrum in the 5.9 gigahertz band away from transportation safety. The comments and replies submitted to the FCC in response to the NPRM overwhelmingly opposed repurposing the spectrum away from transportation safety. In fact, more than 85% of the commenters opposed the FCC's proposal. We ask you to work with USDOT and the transportation community to prevent the FCC from reallocating spectrum in the 5.9 GHz band away from transportation safety. Your participation at this critical juncture could save thousands of American lives and hundreds of billions of dollars each year. We look forward to working with you to ensure that the safety, economic, congestion mitigation, and efficiency benefits that V2X technology can provide are realized in the U.S. The NTIA submitted a document to the FCC on September 8, 2020. To summarize, the FCC alone cannot overturn what the NTIA and FCC have discussed and decided. Moreover, reassignment without technical verification is not permitted. NTIA requests that the rules be clarified to specifically recognize NTIA's authority to amend, modify, or revoke existing assignments that could affect the coordination zones listed in Table 1. Required functionality usage is imposed based on coordination between NTIA and the FCC. NTIA also attached a document that the FCC published in 2016, an interpretation of radio wave interference that is inconsistent with NPRM. The FCC found that the harmful interference had generally been caused by some unlicensed wireless devices operating within the 5 GHz frequency band. 
This includes devices installed outdoors, at high elevations, within line of sight of radar installations, and indoor operated devices. In the United States, Europe, and Japan, DSRC is deployed as the only mature and proven technology for direct V2X communication because DSRC technology was developed specifically to satisfy transportation safety purposes by experts around the world. Through collaboration, DSRC technologies have already been validated for and deployed in real-world use in Japan, the United States, and Europe. Approximately 9,200 RSUs, or roadside units, have already been installed in the United States by US DOT and State Departments of Transportation as of July 2020, and 12,400 units in total will be installed soon. Numbers of roadside units and infrastructure are progressing steadily in each region of the United States, Europe, and Japan. Through the continued expansion of deployed DSRC V2X technologies in Japan, Europe, and the United States, as well as continued allocation of already allocated, dedicated V2X spectrum, our transportation systems will become safer and smarter while using our transportation resources more efficiently. DSRC V2X technologies have been expanding for our ultimate safety goals.